Hello and welcome to today's Roll and Relax class. I am Claudia Mühlenweg. I am the founder of Holistic Vision, the creator of the Naturally Clear Vision Method. I'm also a certified base method teacher and a yoga teacher, yoga tuner and role model method teacher. That's a whole mouthful. Today, what these videos are about are these live classes that I'm teaching live are about using therapy balls to release tension and tight muscles, which is related to eyesight um, because any tension, especially in the upper back and the neck and the head that we carry affects your vision, but tension anywhere in the body is not great for your performance, your mental performance, your visual performance. So you need, um, today you will need a pair of the um, tune-up balls, the small tune -up, um, yoga tune-up balls. You can also use uh, the tune-up, the plus balls, the slightly bigger or the alpha ball for, for most of the things today. So if you have those, great. And I, I actually thought it would be great to kind of show the muscles that we're working on. I have these little, um, what do you call these little cards? I forgot now how they're called, but we will start with the muscle called the supraspinatus. So it's right um, above that ridge of your shoulder blade. And then this is what we did. We did this, no, we didn't do this before. This one we didn't do before. And then we will be working on the infraspinatus and the teres minor. So you can see they're both kind of on that shoulder blade near the armpit area. And the latissimus is, hold on, the latissimus, we will be doing that. So the latissimus is kind of, can you see those? It's um, it's uh, superficial to it. So you, you would see these, you would see all these muscles affected, right? So it's not like we only have one muscle in the area, so they're overlayering. And then we will also, um, the teres major, you see teres major and teres minor. So see the, how they're both on the shoulder blade, one is lower, one is higher. And then the last, uh, not the last one, but this is one that we're doing, this is, so this is a tricky one to get to. So this is basically the, the front of your shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade is right on the back, but if you go look from the front of the body, it's the muscle on the front of the shoulder blade. So it's kind of, we would have to press hard, to, but we will, we will get to that muscle. So that's the front of the shoulder blade, not seen from the back. All right, I hope this is helpful. I like to see these visual cues, but now enough talk, let's get started. So use, start with the, with the yoga tuna ball. So, and if you have a bigger one and you find this too painful, you can go to the wall or you can use a bigger ball, okay? So I guess I have to turn this down a little bit. Let me see. And so the ball will be placed, let me show this. It will be right, so the trapezius that we did on the day one was kind of like this thick muscle right here. So we're going more toward the outside, right here. It's on the top, but it's more toward the outside, more here, versus near the neck, okay? And um, you, you can use a block because we will be lifting the hips. So I like to use a block so I don't have to work so hard. So you, let me see if you can see it. So the ball is right here. And then you just let that arm relax. And if you already feel like this is really painful, you can just start, yeah, have to move it more to the outside. If you're not sure, move it more to the outside versus toward the neck. I already feel something right here. Oh, wow. Take a few deep breaths. And if you can, so you put your feet pretty close to your buttocks, like in bridge and yoga, and then you lift your hips. So this makes it more intense. If this is too much, just stay where you are. But you can also use a yoga block. So this is where the yoga block comes in handy. So you're basically loading more body weight onto the ball. And again, if you already feel a lot, you can go to the wall, you can um, use a bigger ball if this is too intense. So just stay here for a few breaths. You can obviously, if you make the yoga block higher, you're loading more body weight, or if you don't use a yoga block, it's more of a, it's a little bit more work, right? You can, you don't need a block, but I like the block because that way I don't have to hold up my body weight. And then, and this is not a huge movement, but you can kind of shift your hips a little side to side. So the ball will basically move along the top of the shoulder blade, but again, more toward your arm than toward your neck. So you're on that outer side of the, top shoulder, so to speak. So this is the supraspinatus. It's one of the four rotator cuff muscles. And then you can also, this is a little trickier, you can kind of push and pull with your feet and the ball will go vertical. So this is where you probably have to go off the yoga block, but you kind of move this way. Oh. Yeah, this one is quite intense. 
And now the next move, this is, this is like, I think I have to shift this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. For the next one, we will be doing snow angel arms. So again, you can use a yoga block for this next one. I like it with a block and here, the ball needs to be more here, right? Does that make sense? Let me show you again. So the ball is more here than here. It's more here on that outer edge. It's usually where it's more painful. That's usually the good indicator. The supraspinatus tends to be even worse on the on trapezius. So right there. And then you have the palm facing up when you so the arms are near the body. And then you inhale, and then you so you either just do snow angel arms with your palm facing up, or if you can add rotation, I don't know if you can see it. Oops, my computer is in the way here. So that your let me see. I can't see because my arm. I guess, let me see, I need to move a little front away, but what I want you to add is a rotation. So it's not just moving your arm around, but kind of rotating it so that, can you see this? So my hand is this way at the end with a straight arm. So if you have that ability and maybe you don't go all the way where, you, <clears throat> where your pinky or your palm faces all the way down, but see if you can add rotation as you move into these snow angel arms. I'm gonna, turn this down a little bit so I think you can hopefully see more of my arm. I'm doing this. So the rotation is optional. I mean, anything is optional. So don't go beyond the point where it's, so you're doing this kind of rotation. Can you see it now? Yeah. So you're moving and then you're flipping it up. So you're going from internal, um, well, internal rotation would be this if you would start with the palm down. So you already have external rotation but you're going all the way around. Breathing as you do. So we do about eight of these snow angel arms. And I bet this is, if it doesn't hurt for you, then I'm jealous. <laughs> so you can inhale and then exhale, lower the arm down. That rotation adds a little bit of an extra movement because after all this is the rotator cuff. So you really, if you add that rotation, you're really going through the whole motion, not that, not just the adduction, uh, abduction, which is kind of moving the arm away and then coming back down, but you're also adding the rotation. Let's do one more. Wow, this is so intense. And again, you can do this at the wall if this is too much or use a bigger ball. All right, ooh, how did that go? <laughs> and now we will do the other side. Let me see if I can switch my computer around so that you can see the other side. Um, or maybe I have to turn my mat around. Actually, I just do it this way. No, I have to go this way. So again, we will start, well, let me see. This is the only thing about doing it live that I have to consider how you guys can see what I'm doing. But you've done the first side. So we always start with just placing the ball there, you know, without even lifting your hips. Just place the ball in that outer kind of ridge of your shoulder and just check in. And then you can lift your hips up and do that little bit of a side shimmying so that the ball travels um, across like on top of the, it's not a huge movement. It's really more like you're loading the weight more toward the neck and then toward the outer edge. And then maybe push and pull with your feet so that the ball goes a little bit up and down. Ooh, I definitely, this is way less for me than the right side. The right side was way, way, way worse. And maybe you notice a similar thing. <sighs> And then this is where the block, I just love to have the block under my buttocks, <laughs> under my sacrum. It's actually under your sacrum, not your lower back. So you can see it here pretty well. So don't put the block here. That's not good for your lower back. Put it right under your sacrum. So you basically have that support. And then you start, you do those snow angel arms. So you start with your palm facing the ceiling. And then as you go, now you can see better, you rotate. Oops, now my water bottle is in my way. <laughs> Now there's blocks. We have to move your props out of the way and then slowly go back. So you're rotating, you're turning your hand back this way. 
I hope you can see this okay. So you kind of, at some point here, flip your palm the other way. And not everybody will have this range of motion in their shoulders. So if you don't, just do as much as you can and as long as you have this good pain. Mm. And maybe you have to reset the ball. So if you sometimes the ball kind of put it in a spot where you feel something. You can always move it a little bit further down, further up, just kind of find a spot and then don't forget to breathe. Wow. And I, if you have any injuries, I did, forgot to say that in the beginning, then please, please, please consult with your physical therapist or don't go too far. If you don't have the range of motion that I have, I have really good range of motion in my shoulders, then maybe just do this, right? Just do whatever feels okay for you. So don't push yourself into a space that feels incredibly painful. You just want to get to that point where you feel what I call the good pain. So it just feels like a really nice kind of like as if you're getting a massage and the massage therapist is going in there and it's not just stroking nicely, but it's kind of you're feeling something. You know that there's something that will be released. Okay, let's do one more. I lost track of count, but... <sighs> okay. Okay. For the next move, we will do that um, teres minor infraspinatus. So all the muscles on the shoulder blade. Um, let me turn around again. So it's, we basically, we've done this at the wall on day five. So it's the, um, it's we're on the shoulder blade and it, it's okay anywhere on that shoulder blade. Let me see if I can find those cards again for you, infraspinatus. So it's, it's these guys again. So you, anyone, the shoulder blade. So for some of you, this might be more intense toward the arm, like here. And for some of you, it might be more intense toward, this, toward the spine, but we're gonna be on the shoulder blade. We've done this at the wall and we've done this, and I think on day one or two, I can't remember a little bit of this. So you come onto your backs and you place that ball anywhere on that shoulder blade and maybe just kind of wiggle around and see where you feel like, oh yeah, right here in the middle, I found a spot. So find a spot, right? That, and then you lean more body weight into that side. So, you know, I, I do my right side. I let my right knee drop to the side. You can also, um, maybe that feels okay, put a block under your head. Actually, I don't like that. But if you feel like your chin is like here, it might be nice to have a blanket or a cushion under your head. And then you just, you can just kind of gently um, so the, the muscles are moving, the muscles are kind of parallel with your shoulders. So if you do side to side, you are moving along the same direction as the muscles. So, you know, you kind of can think of that as stripping it, like going the same brain. And then you can also like push up and down a little bit. This doesn't really work that well. It works better at the wall where you go in a cross, you cross fiber. So you go vertical. Um, and again, this is because your hair will be moving on the mat. So this one is easier. This move is easier to do on the wall. <sighs> but you don't have to move much. For me, it's maybe a centimeter, right? I'm kind of almost like circling that trigger point, that tightest spot there. Hmm. <sighs> and you can always just stay still and just breathe into that spot. So you, there's no need to move necessarily. And then we've done this before, you, um, you just let your arm move like seaweed. Wow. wow. Go slow. Imagine you're like yeah, seaweed underwater. So you let your arm go in any and all directions and just explore. And if you find the area that feels really good, you can always stay there. So you're moving it across, you're moving it down toward your pelvis and then up in any way. You can make figure eights. You can float in any movement that you like. For me, this is way most intense when I do the lifting my arm overhead. Breathe into your belly. 
Again, you can absolutely use a bigger ball if this is too intense. The smallest ones are by far the most intense ones. Whew. Yeah, when I do this, it's wow. So your hips are on the mat right now. I would not, if you lift your hips up, that would be way. <laughs> just, you're just using your, your body weight on that. All right, so the next move is very similar. So we're gonna stay in that same, we keep the ball there, but we're trying to reach that um, subscapularis, is the name of the muscle. It's that muscle that's covering your shoulder blade on the front, so if you would poke, so your rib cage toward the shoulder blade. It's so the way we try to do it, and maybe let's practice this before we start getting on the ball. So when you get, let me see if I can show this. So you basically want to grab your elbow and you kind of squish. There's the ribs. You feel your ribs here, and then you you squish into that space right there. Like so, you're reaching the front of the shoulder blade. This might already be painful, and so we will have the ball exactly where we had it before on the shoulder blade and do those seaweed like floating arms, but you keep pressing your thumb. So if you do the right side, you press your left thumb into that space while you do those movements. So what we just did, put the ball right on that shoulder blade there. And then you squeeze your thumb. You know, you might have to do this for us to even get in there. You squeeze your thumb with, like underneath your rib, your rib cage, kind of into that front armpit, and then you move. Oh yeah, Ooh, <laughs> and you move your arm around. And it's not always one muscle. I mean, I'm sure there's parts of the latissimus. There's lots of different muscles, so it's not just one. <laughs> there's layers and layers, and then obviously the fascia that connects it all. Yeah. So you're pressing with your left thumb into that space. So you're pressing the thumb down toward your, toward your shoulder blade. You're not pressing just in, but you're pressing in and down. And again, if you find a good spot, you can just stay there, just press the thumb. So you, it's kind of wedged, you're wedging the, that shoulder blade between the ball and the thumb. So. So this muscle is not really easy to reach, but you're grabbing parts of it. And you, maybe you can even move your thumb like a little bit like up and down, like so I'm doing like a little bit of finding that best, most tight place while you're moving your arm into around. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? I also like to know how that muscle is moving when I'm moving my arm, like what is actually happening. So when you stretch your arm overhead, there's the most amount of extension. Actually, this is called flexion, shoulder flexion, but that's the, the most like the length that you get here, right? Oh, wow. And then you're like, how could that get so tight? What happened? Mm. All right, and slowly let that go. And then we have to do the other side, obviously. Let me look at the time. Okay, we have like eight more minutes. So I'm going to flip around so that you guys can see me. And uh, maybe move my back. And then, so we start with just the, um, not using the thumb, just using the, oops, I have a big wave in my mouth here. Okay, too many props floating around. So we will start again on that shoulder blade, Terrace Minor and Prosperinata. So anywhere on that shoulder blade, um, you know, lean more into this. So I'm gonna drop my left knee and um, just let that arm rest here and just kind of roll a little bit around and see where that is most intense. Find that spot on your shoulder blade. Could be more toward the armpit. Like for me, it's more on that outer lateral edge. Um, but for some of you, it might be more toward the spine. So find a spot <sighs> and then just I always just stay put before you add movement, just kind of, yeah, right here. Find that spot that hurts the most and breathe into it. And then you can add a little motion. Maybe 
you know, moving up and down a little bit like so. So it's not, you can, you can do this with more movement at the wall. We did it while we had the hand like this, when uh, your arm crossed over, but you can, uh, it's not going to be a big movement, but you can also load more weight that like you can shift more weight. So you have like, just kind of move around either rolling more over to that side or doing a little bit of an up and down or side to side movement. And maybe if you lift your head, that goes a little easier. You know, you can do this. <laughs> so you're kind of moving around that spot, uptown, downtown, sideways. You're just kind of circling that most tender spot. Oh, yeah. And again, it's totally fine if you just stay in that spot, breathe into it, relax your arm. If you stay, if you're not moving, just relax that arm. And you decide how much body weight you put on that spot. And then add that kind of floating your arm in space, seaweed, motion, crossing over, going overhead, and just notice where you feel the most. And maybe you need to adjust the spot or move around a little and find a new spot. Breathe deeply into your belly. You can put the other hand on your belly just to know that you're not chest breathing. You really want to go into that relaxation space and just explore. For me, overall, the left side is it's painful, but it's not as bad as the right. But it's not a big difference. If one is a 10, then the other one is maybe a seven or eight. So it's not like I don't feel anything here. Nine. Hmm. All right, and then let's add that subscapularis. So where you kind of press, um, and it's maybe it's better to start before you're on the ball, but press into that space um, between your rib cage. So you're squeezing in there while you're on the ball. And, um, and then you continue that movement. So you press with your right thumb if you do the left side. You should feel that muscle moving when you press your thumb into it. You should feel like it's, you have to press pretty hard. And then you should feel a pain like really where your thumb is. So the other ball is just adding that additional pressure on the back. So you both feel the back of the shoulder blade. I do. And then you also feel where your thumb is pressing into that muscle. Mm. And then maybe where you have feel the most, you can always stay there and maybe even use your thumb, thumb a little bit and circle around like you're pressing and you're massaging. And the yoga tuna balls, the small balls that you're using that I'm using right now are kind of the pressure of a thumb in terms of um, amount of pressure on the skin. So it's very similar and you just, This feels so good. And I wanted to do the latissimus too, but we don't have enough time. We have to do that another time. The latissimus goes all the way from here. It runs all the way to your back. So that one on both sides will take a little bit of, that one will take probably like four to five minutes on each side. So we will do that another time, but let's see what the time looks like. Um, okay, yeah, we basically have two more minutes. So one thing that I like to finish with with this is trapezius. So similar how we did in the beginning, and I don't have a, a card. I didn't bring a card for this because I didn't plan. But it's, um, let me see. <laughs> so we, the super spinatus was more here, right, on the outer edge. So now we're going more into that, in that thickest part. It's, it's really that thick muscle that you feel here is the, tra the um, upper trapezius. So we go there, and you, this is also nice to do with a block. So you put, I, you put both balls there, and you have to kind of nuzzle them a little bit behind you. And um, this is where like less clothing is better because the balls and the skin are the best. And then you lift your hips, and again, you can use the block. So you lift your hips, put it under the sacrum, 
And then here, this is, we did this at the wall. You can shimmy side to side. You can go up and down. You can't really do that much. The block will be wiggling, but you can do a little bit up and down. And my favorite, where I feel the most, you might already feel a lot here. I don't really feel that much. But if you add that like inhale and lifting the arms overhead, this is where I feel something. And then you can also lift your hips off the block. So you obviously have more weight when you don't have the block. And that's what I like to do, like push and pull. So find, a, find something that hurts here. <laughs> you know, maybe with the block, without the block, and you can also move your arms. You can do like a, a moving, like inhaling, lifting the arms overhead, exhaling, lowering them. So this is an area where I finally kind of tamed my tension, so to speak. The trapezius used to be really bad, but for you, it might be enough to just do this on the block and not even move that much. Or you can do the snow angel arms here too. Hmm. And you can, if you feel, if you feel very little, you can also do what I like. Just do one boss. So I took one out, and you just do one at a time, and then you can load more pressure. So again, this is an area where I'm thankfully not as tight anymore. Yeah, one one win, right? <laughs> and you can do that up and down. So. At the wall, the side to side where you roll on the top is easier. And I feel on the map, this kind of like this way is easier on the, on the map. But all right, so we're out of time. And, but you can continue this. So no, you, you can continue to roll. You don't have to finish because the video is over. But I hope this was, thank, uh, not thankful. I hope this was helpful <laughs> for you. Um, here we go. And um, yeah, I see you tomorrow. And please, if you watch this on YouTube, oh God, I look at my hair. <laughs> if you watch this on YouTube, um, please post a comment. I really appreciate comments, feedback, anything you would like to see, that would be really helpful. And otherwise, I see you tomorrow. Bye.